Ben, thank you very much for that. Very inspiring and plenty of things for us to dig into, which we're going to do. Um, I'm going to lead with a few questions up here in front, and then we're going to get the rest of you involved. Uh, what I'd like to do to start is follow on one of the very important points you made um, related to the fact that we have the technology. What we don't have is the financial and economic model lined up in a way uh, that allows us to do the right thing. And I'd like to hear you talk a little bit more, uh, and we can make it specific to, to meeting and, and making effective the climate deal. What are some of those key misalignments? What needs to change to actually make this work? Well, first of all, you have to realize what a task is for the different parts of the world. In the West, the issue for most of the leadership is to preserve wealth for the individuals. But if you live in India or you live in China, the issue is very different. Although it is an economic success of the greatest magnitude what happened in India over the last 15 years, I mean, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, if you would say India, people would say poverty and elephants. Today, the word India shows up more in the, in the budget in the US as a threat than any other nation. So it has changed dramatically, and it has changed the, the country as such. But it is a country of 1.1 billion people, of which 400 million, which is more than the total population of the US, if I'm well informed, is now middle class. At least 700 million people, 700 million people, still under the poverty line. Which means that for a country as India, Climate change has to be balanced with the legitimate desire to uplift the 700 million. So the agenda is very different from where you sit. Having said that, if you look to the technology available, the issue is how do we find the business models to pay for that? How do we find models, for example, with a huge cost in intellectual property rights to be available not just for the countries that can afford it, but for the countries who need it. That's a big issue. Another big issue that we have to deal with is, yes, we have, for example, on, uh, on, on coal, a great technology to, to take um, the carbon and store it. Right. It works. It works on a very small scale. Does it work on a big scale? Well, everybody who's been in this industry will tell you, you have to find um, some risk-taking um, kind of, um, of trials. You talk about easily a couple of billion on those trials. Who's going to do that? So there's a whole series of activities where it's there, but it's like sh window shopping. You know, mm -hmm. It's there in the high street. You can see it, but you can't touch it. <laughs> so taking that um, a step further, what do you think are some of the highest and best roles for business? in this global dialogue, in making the deal work, in influencing these mechanisms? So the first thing business is trying to do is get their act together. I remember that I was asked to chair the, uh, the climate change board in the, in the UK at the time at BT. And uh, when I was asked uh, to go and do that, which was a kind of funny to ask a foreigner to go and do that, but anyway. And they've asked you to stay. And they asked me to stay. But when I, when I asked, <laughs> uh, was asked to do that, I went to see my chairman, of course, as you do in situations like that, and he said to me, Ben, I didn't know you were ready for suicide. Um, <laughs> so, um, and when we started, we had 18 chairman and CEO around the table, companies like Shell Oil and BP, and you know, 1% of world uh, CO2 emission was sitting around the table, and most were sitting like this like saying, I'm sitting here to ensure that we do absolutely nothing. And after a while, when you thought, OK, what are the alternatives? What does government have as tool sets? Well, government has only two things, regulation and taxation. Is that what you want? Really not. So what, have we, what do we have? Well, we have technology, we have customers, we have capabilities to execute. So isn't it better to do it yourself than getting things done by others in a way that you really don't want to. And that's what changed the mood of that, of that particular group. Now, the group came out with a, a self-imposed set of criteria uh, in which we are now in the phase of executing, which is far beyond what the government as a task would have given to us. So it's possible, but what you need is the passion of leadership to go and do it. It is possible. 
you need to go and do it. Because the reasons not to do it are always more compelling than the reasons to do it. It's always easier to say there's competition somewhere else, you know, as long as the Chinese are not doing it, and you know, I found in Peru somebody who also was against it, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's what you get. So you need to be stubborn and say, yes, we need to do it. And there's one thing I reminded all the chairmen and CEOs of in the first meeting. I said, read your own job description. Your job description is to be unreasonable and be very good at that. So let's be unreasonable on ourselves and be very good at it. And I think that is the task at hand. Following on that a little bit, what um, I think about this in two different categories. Uh, what do companies do individually with their own practices, with mm -hmm. their own products? And what can companies, industries do more usefully collectively? And I think about, uh, against the backdrop of your story about the, the CBI, uh, all the uproar we've had in this country around uh, our Chamber of Commerce, uh, the, the early attempts that we've had at voluntary coalitions of companies working together on things like climate change. Uh, what do you think of that in terms of where do we allocate our energy? Is this collective effort in business? Is work going hard after the Chamber of Commerce? Is this, is this the focus? Is this worth the energy? Or are we better off doing taking care of our own business? So everybody for, for himself is not a great strategy. I don't believe in that at all. A coalition of the willing is a very good start. It's a very good start because you show that all the yes buts are in fact um, standing with the back to the future and concentrating on what was. On what was. And the, w the best way to do it is to get senior guys really sitting together and go and do it and it will require leadership. In the UK, we were lucky to have uh, the, the business organization believing that this would be a dif uh, making a difference. And the mm. thing that they said to everybody was, you can benefit from an economic point of view because this will be a huge world market. If you're out of the blocks first, just think through what it will mean in a competitive landscape. And I think that's right. Uh, to try to get everybody on board, good luck. <laughs> 